The Giants travel to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Welcome, everyone. Andy and Andrew from Wager Talk. We're going to break down Monday Night Football from a props betting perspective. No time to waste. Let's get right into it. If you guys could hit the like button, it really helps us out. Uh, tell us the best bet in the comment section. And Andrew, as you know, if the audience can't come up with a best bet or a hot take. Let's just put a code word in here. So tell me when to stop, and we will decide what the what the word is. Tell me to stop. Stop. Deal. Oh, what a deal. great word. Deal. I like that. So we one. don't have a hot take. Just type the word deal in the comment section. Helps the algorithm out. Helps us out. Let's wait. Just talk though. We're doing a good job for you guys. All right, Andrew. Uh, the much maligned New York Giants. The offense has just been it's just a screeching halt the last couple of weeks. We're going to go through the passing, then the rushing and receiving. Let's start with passing props. Russell Wilson looked pretty good last week. What are we doing with Daniel Jones and Russell Wilson? Well, I got to say, I think, I, first of all, I got to give you a ton of credit, Andy, because last week there was a game that you said, look at both these over one and a half passing touchdown numbers, and they're both plus money. And, you know, you literally said you could play one of them. And if one of them hits, you make money. Well, I'm pretty sure both hit. Uh, and this time around, I'm actually going to go with the plus 165. So you got to love that. I mean, when one quarterbacks is a half, that's kind of sad. <laughs> but when you got Russell Wilson, look, I understand that there's no question about it, that they will run the ball in if given the opportunity, if they're close enough, if they failed to pass the ball in a few times, they will try to run the ball in. But Hey, I, I don't know if Russ is back to his old ways, but at the same time, you what better of an opportunity? You know, you always talk about, Andy, that it's easier to know what bad teams are going to do than to what good teams are going to be changing, um, you know, each week. And I think that this is a more so fading a defense, fading a Giants team that I think can give up some points. The Pittsburgh Steelers, you look at their schedule, they've had some tough matchups recently. You know, start the year, people were saying, I'm not sure if I believe in this team, if I actually buy it. Look, their defense is great, but I do think they have some weapons. Over one and a half at plus 165 was intriguing for me. And then you know, for the passing for Daniel Jones, this is just an old Andrew special pretty much since I've been doing prop shows with you, Andy, is I'm going to look at the past completions for him because the past completions with him are no longer than 10 yards, it seems like, these days once again. And when that's the case, if you're down in the game, everything starts to add up. So 19 and a half is the completion number that I saw. And I saw 31 and a half for the attempts. I would much rather take the completions. Uh, I'm not saying they're going to be exciting completions. I'm not saying we're going to see highlight career passes by any means, but I think he's going to, you know, really rack up those numbers, especially if they fall down early in this game. So 19 and a half is completions over. Uh, but I really do like that plus 165 number on the over one and a half passing touchdowns. I'm with you. I, that number is pretty out of whack. I mean, it was pretty obvious that Russell Wilson just got into a nice groove with Pickens where he was just th throwing the ball up uh, like for grabs and Pickens was, you know, coming down with it. There's not exactly a great secondary from, from the, from the <laughs> giants. So, um, yeah. When, when I'm looking at the plus plus one sixty five, I would have thought it would have been much closer to even. So I'm with, I hate using the word value on a play. Yeah. Because value, as we all know, value means a play that when it loses, you just say, well, I got the best of the numbers, so I feel much better about it. Like we're trying, <laughs> it doesn't matter if it was, if your pet bet loses, <laughs> it's not good value. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> I think I like Rush Russell Wilson here on the, the one and a half. I thought the, um, I thought the, uh, the, the passing yards was a little curious here uh, with Wilson being just at 200 um, or pretty close to 200. So yeah, Russell Wilson, 200 plus. He had 264 and last week, and that was a game that they ran the ball a ton. You know, they ran the ball 36 times, and he still threw for 264 and two. So if, I, if I'm playing anything here, it's probably Russell Wilson, and I think it's the passing touchdowns. I don't know what to make of Daniel Jones. I, Daniel Jones, I mean, you're getting a pretty good prize on him just to throw one, except he's gone two games in a row without throwing one. Like, So how can you trust him? To even throw one, um, he didn't even finish the game last week. Drew Locke came in uh, for a while, so I, I I cannot predict anything from Daniel Jones. So it's Russell Wilson props or nothing uh, in this. And point. how many touchdowns are they going to get? I mean, if the first one's a running touchdown, you're like, you know, you're starting to panic a little bit, thinking, are they going to get one more? How many more are they going to? How many field goals do they kick tonight? Uh, they've been outscored forty-five to ten. 
in the in the last two weeks. So, you know, they put up 29 points against Seattle, but that was a Seattle defense that was so banged up. They were playing backups to the backups. Um, and, you know, before that against Dallas, they only scored 15. Like, so this is a team that just – when you look at that, that that the 29 point performance against Seattle really is throwing everybody off the set. And you're right. What's the guarantee that they're even going to score multiple touchdowns, let alone one touchdown? So uh, let's take a look at some rushing props here. Um, I want nothing to do with <laughs> I really want nothing to do with any of these Giants players, Andrew. Like it's <laughs> unders or nothing, but the books are all over it, like 30 and a half. To Singletary, that's so low. Like, I don't know if I could play that under. What do you take? Uh, what do you what, what do you do with these rushing props? I like the way you introed it because uh, this isn't this wasn't really a pick that I was like looking to bet by any means, but I did see like kind of a trend pick out there that uh, somehow Daniel Jones is go is going over his uh, five and a half rushing attempts at a decent clip. Uh, but I I feel like. I don't know. Like you got to really like that one. If that's your play of the day, Daniel Jones on the rushing attempts. Uh, but I'll tell you one that I actually do like, and it's Najee Harris over on rushing plus receiving. You know, I've talked about it a lot on this show. The fact that for the most part, I like just picking one or the other, you know, just picking rushing or picking receiving, but there's certain players and certain opportunities where one guy is going to need a boost from the other option. You know, like, you have a running back that, you know, like look at Brees Hall. Like there's been, I I know so many people that have been burnt on his rushing yards when he's had like a career receiving day. And the, and the passes he's catching are like three yard receptions, but then he's making something work with it. Uh, four straight games. He's gone over 76 and a half uh, rushing plus receiving uh, at home. Excuse me. And uh, you take a look at what he did against the Jets, 102 yards, you know, Vegas, 106 yards. Uh, Dallas, he needed some help with the receiving at 42 rushing yards, but 43 um, receiving. So sometimes you kind of get that boost from the other option, the receiving. And I feel like that's a really good play. And he's someone that I think if you're betting on him, you want to be looking at both, not just one of those options. That, that's all that stood out to me, uh, Andy, for the rushing. Yeah, we t we did talk about Brees Hall's a guy you, you can play your rushing and receiving. He just accumulates a ton of yards. You just don't really know <laughs> where it's where it's going to be coming from. Jalen Warren over seven and a half has a, a little bit of my interest uh, just because last week, you know, he had 12 carries. Um, you know, the Steelers, they controlled the last seven and a half minutes of that Jets game. So, um, yeah, I, I think that uh, I, I if, it, if if Pittsburgh is up, which the spread tells you it's going to be up, I think most people would say the Steelers are probably going to be up. This is just going to be the Najee Harris, Jalen Warren show in the fourth quarter. So, you know, it could be one of these things where if you take the over seven and a half on Jalen Warren, maybe he's got five carries going into the fourth quarter and then he ends with 10, you know, one of those things. So Najee at 15 and a half is an interesting number. Uh, he's, <clears throat> he's gone over this uh, the last couple weeks. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. He didn't get over 15 half, but he had 21 when Russell Wilson started. So I thought that was a, I thought that told you a lot about how the offense actually kind of got a little bit better. So um, yeah, the Daniel Jones, it's six and a half That's rushing a attempts, uh, yeah. but plus money. So that has moved up already. Yep. So um, I kind of like that Jalen Warren one you were saying, and I, I find that a lot of times um, the second option guy, it's almost better to look to them for their, attempts versus their yards. I, yeah. I even think back to uh, Tyler Algier for Atlanta. He's someone that I've actually looked at for attempts far more than I've looked at for the yards. It's kind of like, hey, yeah, you know, our number one guy's tired. Get in there. You know, yeah. we, we don't <laughs> yeah. really need much out of you. We just need something. Get out there. You know, it's what it seems like with these number two guys. And then from a betting perspective for us, that's just, it's one, two, three. We're just racking them up. No matter if, if they run into a pile of their offensive line or a D line, it doesn't matter for us how far they go. It's just one attempt. That's all you need. One attempt at a time, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, uh, there's a Pittsburgh team that only allows 81 yards rushing per game. That's second best um, only to Baltimore. Uh, but now Baltimore, it's just like 
nobody tries to run on Baltimore. They just throw all over the place. Uh, uh, our guy Jameis lit him up. I'm going to get to Jameis here in a bit. I've I've got a I, I, Jame. Jameis might be my favorite player in the NFL right now, <laughs> right now, right now. So, yeah I, yeah, I mean, let's take a look at Devin Singletary. So, he played against Philly. He had five carries for 18 yards. before the, His game before that against Dallas, 14 carries for 24 yards. That's a putrid 1.7 yards per carry, Andrew. So, he's not getting it done. He's been banged up. Like, how much are they going to run the ball? So, I would lean under 30 and a half, but again – Oh, that's such a low number. Like he busts one for 15 yards and now your bets, you know, kind of dead. It's just tough to take an under um, like that. So um, once again, guys hit the like button. And if you could uh, type the word deal in the comment section, unless you want to tell us your best bet. Cause I always love seeing what you guys are betting out there. Love uh, reading the comments and responding to everything. So uh, let's get to receiving props here in just a bit, but uh, real quick, Andrew, tell everyone what you have up at a wager talk. I know we're going to see you on puck time today. NHL season is in full effect. What do you have up at wager talk? Yeah, Andy, like, I'll just continue to recommend those 30 day uh, NHL passes. I feel like that's the sweet spot that people like right now is the 30 day, you know, it's not going to give you that sample size with three days or seven days, but 30 days. If you, if you might not want to get in on board, for the entire season. And that might not be in your budget. The 30 day is great. Uh, we have been using that NHL 150 promo code quite a bit. Uh, keep on getting that extended, you know, because people keep on asking for it. But the 5% plays, you know, the CFL playoffs begin next week. And uh, we're in a five and one run overall with uh, 5% plays across different sports, uh, NFL, NHL, CFL. We have a 5% play going up this weekend. So I'm looking forward to it, Andy. And uh, tonight we'll have just, it looks like two props uh, in the NFL game from Monday Night Football. So looking forward to it. And how about yourself? How'd the weekend go for you? Oh, man, it was a great, it was, it was, it really was a great week. We went 14 and five over the last seven days. Nice little three and two day in the NFL. Um, I, you know, people brought up that we like that I'd never mentioned National Tight End Day. And I was like, I don't know how much coaches put into that. Apparently a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like every Did you see all these parlay grand. slips floating around? Pe yes. everybody, apparently every guy made like 20 grand yesterday. Like uh, every single person that bets on uh, on props. Kudos to them because yeah. I I missed it. I, I That was a complete swing and a miss by me. But I will say I went into Sunday Night Football and I was like, if I miss out on George Kittle having a big game, I like like. I, I, I no longer can claim to be a prop master. So we <laughs> cashed on uh, George Kittle over his receiving yards. Um, uh, pretty That was a first half cash. So, yeah, it was really, really good. Um, we got an NA, NFL and NHL pack. We're just calling it the Monday night uh, moneymaker. So, um, yeah, 69% NFL winners in October. So we're seeing NFL really good. Um, in NHL, uh, th this particular play is 8-1. and one. This season, so that one's been hitting, and I believe we're what eighty-five and fifty-nine the last two seasons in NHL. So, if you're looking for just uh, to cash on some plays tonight, go ahead and do that. But again, you're right; the thirty days is where it at. I do. I think they still have the thirty-day pass for eight dollars a day, uh, still going. Uh, it's a November special, and yeah, it gets all you. It gets all NFL plays, all NHL, NBA. Uh, everything. Yeah. 30 for all access. You do, you do not need a, a promo code for this. Get you all 5%, um, everything like that. Coming off a nice 5% winner on college football had Indiana university over 30 and a half points, Andrew, and they scored 31. Oh, love. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> like, let's go. We, like when they scored and they're out 30 and you're like, make this extra point. This is the most important extra point of That's your awesome. life. I'm sorry. That's of my awesome. life. <laughs> That this is college, sweet. Yeah, this college kicker has no idea. Every win counts the same, no matter how you win. No matter how you win. I know. So it was it was pretty wild. So um, we're going to talk receiving props, and then uh, we have to talk a little bit about yesterday, and I have to talk about Jameis Winston because there was something that everyone missed that Jameis did yesterday. Um, <laughs> receiving props, again, I mean, do you trust this Giants <laughs> wide receiving <laughs> core? Um, I feel like Wandale Robinson, his receptions are kind of where everyone goes. Four and a half does seem a little bit low. Like if they are in catch up mode, this is a Wandale Robinson dink and dunk. I know Malik Neighbors is there. I'm not playing over six and a half. Good Lord. Seven catches for Neighbors. He could get there. But if you're Pittsburgh, aren't you just 
I mean, just shadowing neighbors and, you know, making his life a, a nightmare. Pickens at four and a half, I imagine, is going to be the popular play. What do you think? Uh, I I love these segues because you're like, how could we take these guys? And I'm like, yeah, I know it is kind of like a hold your nose type of th- type of thing. Darius Slayton, over two and a half receptions. Okay. Nine and two, his last 11 games played. Let's go. I yes. mean, that, that that's kind of crazy. And I, I love these, like, kind of, like, low-hanging picks here. Uh, eight of his last nine away games, he has cashed this prop. Again, some people don't care about road home splits. I actually didn't used to care about it, Andy. And lately, I do. It's like something something lately has just turned me. Like In both NFL and NHL, I'm like, you know what? At this point, it's just a fact. Like this player or this team is better defensively at home. This team in the end, the Vegas Golden Knights, you won't catch me betting on the money lines on the road. I like them at home, you know, and some players like this example. And I think honestly, it's probably because the Giants are, although they're already a bad football team, they're usually worse when they're on the road. And when you take a receptions guy, I, I'm taking Daniel Jones over on his completions. Like I mentioned, well, he's got to throw the ball to somebody. You know, and obviously his receiving yards number is low. The number is only two and a half plus one ten. The history is there to back it up. I like that one quite a bit. You mentioned the uh, the Robinson one. That one seems like when we start seeing all these tweets floating around tonight, like an hour before kickoff, that'll be like the sports books tweeting out like most popular bet tonight from all sports books will be this. I feel like that's the one everyone's gonna like. How about how about we go to instead instead of Pat Frymouth anything receiving receptions. <laughs> Let's just take him touchdown. You know, let, let's just skip yeah. the process. Let's just with skip you. everything else and just take I've, him to find the end zone. <laughs> it's, it's, you're, I'm, you're, you're reading my mind. I was like, eh, 29 and a half. But, man, Tomlin is the, like, if if there is one coach on Monday Night Football who just watched all the tight ends catch touchdowns, yeah. Mike Tomlin is going to do whatever he can to get Friar Booth a touchdown. Plus 290? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a that's a that's great worth one. it. He's if they get inside the ten, he's getting at least two targets. At least two targets are are coming his way, and this could totally be in the fourth quarter, like garbage time. Get get Friar Muth out there on national. I <laughs> I love it. I love Friar Muth plus two ninety. <laughs> so we're skipping all the receiving props and just yeah. going to him. I, like I mentioned though, I did have that rushing and receiving one that I liked uh, with Harris. So. Okay. I, I have to make that count. That has to count for both my segments, both the rushing and receiving. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a game where you tread lightly and you just take uh, maybe one or two plays and that's about it. And really it comes down to the, the unknowns with the Giants. I just don't know what to expect from them. I don't have high expectations and I think these numbers are pretty well um, dialed in. I did want to uh, go over uh, the team totals here. Um I mean, you can get him under 14 and a half. That's so bad in today's NFL. Like, really, you can't get three scores? Yeah. I'm not taking him over. I think that's an interesting one. Um, I do like over 21 and a half uh, for Pittsburgh. Th- th- that offense, it felt like Russell Wilson was so clunky at the beginning of the game, and then he just started to get rolling and get rolling and get rolling and then they end up putting up 37 points as a team so you're getting 21 and a half and this is a this is a giant team that just gave up a bazillion points to philly so uh, don't ignore the team totals and honestly if you're looking for some parlay pieces pittsburgh over like 15 and a half is you know over 13 and a half just get two touchdowns if you're looking for some alt lines like if you want to do like like yeah, if you want to do like a 13 and a half with something else that you really like, that's certainly something that uh like a that, player that, to get a point tonight in the NHL, like a top line guy or a guy not to get a point on the bottom yeah, line. Yeah, like dry side to get a point. Yeah. He's like scoring a goal every single game. Here, we can do we got time. We can do a little um uh a little uh same game parlay here if we're 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 in that mode. So let's, let's take the Steelers. Let's just go like 14 and a half. I think that's pretty good. Um, I think we like Russell Wilson. So let's just put him to throw a touchdown. Right. Um, and now we're at minus two forty five. Um, and then like rushing props. I think we like uh, Najee Harris maybe to get like 50 yeah. yards. We'll give him a little bit of love. Yeah. But... Minus minus one thirty. There you go. Gee, boom. Fitz- 
But yeah, but Najee to get 50 plus, Russell to throw a touchdown, Steelers over 14 and a half. That's uh that's something that I, that I think you could uh, get to. That's not an official pick that we're putting out for clients, but yeah, an that's pretty solid, it. honestly. That's pretty solid. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good for uh for same game part like so. Um, all right, so I brought up Jameis. Uh so Andrew, what fan base is more happy today? Washington's or Cleveland's? Like, I think Cleveland. And Washington so too. Washington's been happy the past few weeks already, kind of. Cleveland needed the I love I love <laughs> I'm the kind of guy, Andy, when I'm watching social media clips, I just can't help myself but read comments while I'm watching. And I love all that this guy, this guy is so well spoken. This guy is like a po politician. This guy should work in the newsroom. Like he's like everything he says, there's no ums or ahs. He's so confident in himself. And like he just is He's like, this city needed this. This win is for them. They needed this. It's like, holy man, you're getting me fired up right now. It's a Sunday afternoon. Like, you're getting me pumped up. Yeah, I mean, two fan bases that, like, like you go to Washington, it's like they finally get rid of Dan Snyder, probably one of the, probably the worst owner in the last, like, 20 years. If he's not the worst, it's got to be, like, top five. So they <laughs> they get rid of him, and they get Jaden Daniels, their quarterback <laughs> of the future, like, this, like they've they've gone from the depths of hell to uh, like this amazing situation, and then Cleveland randomly gets out of the Deshaun Watson situation, and then they get Jameis. So uh, here was here was the thing that Jameis meant. Well, first off, <laughs> Jameis's most accurate pass was when he threw it right to Kyle Hamilton of the Ravens, <laughs> who yeah. just dropped it. So. <laughs> but but I love Jameis. So Jameis gets done with the game, and uh, he's doing his post game <laughs> interview, and he's like. Yeah, to quote a rapper from Detroit, and I'm like, you're in Cleveland, man. <laughs> like, so he quotes Eminem from Lose Yourself, a song that's like, a, a, how long ago was that song? But everyone so, knows the lyrics, though. Everybody knows them. Okay, well, first off, MGK, Machine Gun Kelly, is from Cleveland, brags about Cleveland, and had a rap beef with Eminem. But yeah, is, yeah. is talking about Eminem. And so then his the lyric he quotes is, you only get one shot, do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. This is Jameis's third team he started for. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is not your one shot, it's your third <laughs> shot, man. Like, but I guess that... I guess that lyric isn't like great. Like, yeah, you only get three opportunities in the yeah. next few years while you're making millions of dollars. So yeah, sh shout out to Jameis. You only get one shot with the Buccaneers and the Saints and the Browns. You're like, yes, you're, you're he's good shot. at bringing the fans into it. I'll say that like some he's players and coaches, they don't want to bring the fans into it. Like they kind of play for themselves and they'll, they'll say nice things when they have to. He loves bringing the fans into it. Like, Let's 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 not kid ourselves. He knows he's kind of a fan favorite. He knows. Absolutely. A hundred percent. It's it's great. It, I just I laugh so hard when he's bringing up Detroit rap. Yeah. Up and there's a Cleveland <laughs> national musician that's right there from the city. Um, so anyway, well, by the one way, thing I wanted to mention, Andy, was uh, this is more so just about prop related and, and, and my Packers. I was a little skeptical in the off season when they got rid of Aaron Jones. I think sometimes as a fan and I make it very clear, I am a fan of the Packers. You get attached to certain players, right? And you're used to seeing them wear the uniform, you're used to seeing them out there, but you don't like when they get hurt, right? Obviously. And that was kind of something that they're worried about with Aaron Jones, but 25 carries for Josh Jacobs yesterday, man. And, and I know the type of game that that was a very weird game for the Packers against the Jags, but if he's going to get these touches, if he's going to get these carries, if he's going to be the guy that in certain games like this, they can keep handing the ball to him. Um, I do not like seeing Jordan Love limping around out there and dealing with whatever he's dealing with again. But you got to love the fact that this team, because look at the playoffs last season for, for the Packers when they shocked a couple different teams. It, it was a lot of like a, a very pass heavy offense. They mix in a strong running back that can be consistent and, and you know, not injury prone. You hate to use that word about certain players, but uh, if he can stay healthy, it, he's actually huge for this team. And 25 plus carries. I'm not sure what his attempts prop was, but I'm sure you flew right over that one. Well, the, the thing with I, there was an element of surprise that the Packers got when Malik Willis came in. Jacksonville had no idea what was coming. So Josh Jacobs had like. 
Malik was doing the RPO and man, there was, there was one play where the linebackers were so lost. They didn't, they had no idea who had the ball. Um, <laughs> but we, yeah, with love banged up, Josh Jacobs props moving forward are going to be uh, pretty big. We can go down the list of some like, like completely missed uh, the mark, the Titans lions game, like Mason Rudolph to throw an interception. That was an obvious one. I was mad that I didn't play Jameis over his passing yards. It was too low. It's a terrible secondary, and you knew he was going to air the ball out yeah. like a million times. Um, let's see. Falcons and Buccaneers. I got nervous about Baker to throw over one and a half touchdowns because Evans and Godwin were out. He just throws three again. Like, And it was plus 130. Just bet it. Every yeah. week, Baker's going to throw. That team cannot run in the ball in. Uh, the new thing <laughs> is, if you ever like the Buccaneers on the point spread, do not play the point spread. Play Baker props. That's what you do. Yes. Because he'll hit it even if they lose. He'll yes. Still, he'll still win it for you. Uh, yes. I uh, threw the ball 50 times for 330 yards yesterday. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Colts and Texans, nothing there. Uh, oh, the Chargers. J.K. Dobbins has scored a touchdown. I like yammered on about that one in a video and then I completely forgot to play it. Like playing the saints. Come on. Um, oh, and so that is the worst feeling. It, it's great for content purposes, but uh, I started doing an every game on the board video for NHL Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And and so it's great because I'm doing my prep even earlier than I usually do. Like I'm like late afternoon Friday is when I record the video typically sometimes Saturday, early morning. But then I'm like, okay, like you literally just gave people like a prop or a cider total on like, you know, 13 games Every game like or even more like okay now now try and pick ones you like the best right and of course it's like oh i said i liked that pick on the video but i didn't bet it i said i like that pick but it's good to know you saw the board right that's what that's how i'm you know it's good to know you're seeing if you're if you had a pick video and you gave out 16 plays and you hit 13 of them but you only gave out one play to clients and it lost. That sucks. But you it's also were right about 13 different things, you know? So it's yeah. tough that way. Uh, we're almost done, but I do have to point out, I mean, in the funniest props game of the year, the Saints play the Panthers <laughs> next Jeez, week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so running backs, <laughs> like you're playing Spencer Rattler over his passing. You're playing Chuba, Chuba Hubbard over his rushing. Uh, those two defenses are all like, like take the over. In that game, that's a game where both offices finally may look like they might look all right. They They're really good. Yeah, it's like 44 and a half. I'll take the over. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Check out all of Andrew's plays at wagertalk.com. I've got my NFL slash NHL Monday Night Money Maker that is up there. As always, thank you very much. Good luck on all your bets, and we will see you ever later.